There's been a lot of talk and news around the latest university leader to testify before Congress about anti-Semitism. And that in particular was Columbia President Manoush Shafiq. And one of the most notable things from this hearing was how it differed from the one that took place four months ago, right, when Harvard's Claudine Gay and UPenn's Elizabeth McGill spoke before the same committee, with reporters describing their responses as terse and lawyerly. And of course, the most controversial moments being when both struggled to answer whether students should be punished if they called for the genocide of Jews, with notably those testimonies kicking off a chain of events that led to both stepping down from their positions. And as the New York Times put it, uh, Shafiq was not about to make the same mistake, describing her testimony as an all-out effort to persuade the committee that she was taking serious action to combat anti-Semitism on campus. Shafiq, for example, reportedly spent many hours preparing, and afterwards, one Republican lawmaker apparently congratulated her on saying the right things. And so with all that, it's no surprise that she and her colleagues were prepared for the question that tripped up Gay and McGill. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Columbia's code of conduct? Mr. Greenwald. Yes, it does. Ms. Shipman. Yes, it does. Dr. Shafiq. Yes, it does. And Professor Schizer. Yes, it does. But also beyond that, a lot of the discussion centered around how the university would deal with perceived anti-Semitism from faculty members, with Shafiq notably disclosing disciplinary details that are usually confidential. For example, she revealed that five faculty members had actually been removed from the classroom or dismissed in recent months for comments stemming from the war, noting in particular Muhammad Abdu, a visiting professor who came under fire for showing support for Hamas on social media, quote, will never teach at Columbia again. They're also revealing that the university was investigating Joseph Massad, a professor who used words like awesome to describe Hamas's October 7th attack that Israel says killed 1,200 people. And under pressure from Elise Stefanik, Shafiq said she would commit to removing Mossad from a leadership position. But with that, Mossad claims that the House Committee had mischaracterized his article, that he was unaware of any investigation targeting him, and that he was already scheduled to leave the leadership position anyway. Though all of this playing out is why you had people saying things like, well, Mossad may have said things that are abhorrent. That it's also worth noting that among the people questioning Shafiq was Republican Tim Wahlberg. You know, the same guy who recently suggested treating Gaza like Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And this, as people say, you know, all this talk about punishing professors professors for things they say that that's worrying for supporters of academic freedom. But for example, retired Columbia professor Sheldon Pollack telling the New York Times that the comments about specific professors were deeply worrying, and that he thinks Shafiq was bullied by these people into saying things she regrets. And Irene Mulvey, the president of the American Association of University Professors, telling the Times, We are witnessing a new era of McCarthyism where a House committee is using college presidents and professors for political theater, and arguing that this will ultimately damage higher education and the robust exchanges of ideas it is founded upon. And notably here, Democrat Bobby Scott of Virginia, while strongly condemning anti-Semitism, also suggested that this was political, noting, for one, that anti-Semitism on college campuses is not new. With them actually playing video clips of the 2017 Unite the Right White Supremacist rally which wound through the University of Virginia, and Scott emphasizing that, quote, we have witnessed a disturbing rise in incidents not only of anti-Semitism, but also in racism, Islamophobia, homophobia, and other forms of hate. And so with that, he suggested that the committee should be investigating all of them. You also had Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, one of the only two Muslim women in Congress specifically questioning Shafiq on whether sufficient action was being taken to help students who face anti-Arab or Islamophobic hate, referencing instances where pro-Palestinian activists were doxxed, as well as the case of the business school assistant professor who had equated Palestine supporters to terrorists and had been accused of harassing students. And then, in one of the weirdest parts of the whole hearing, Republican Rick Allen seemingly quizzed Shafiq about her knowledge of the Bible. Are you familiar with Genesis 12.3? Probably not as well as you are, Congressman. <laughs> well, it's pretty clear it was the covenant that God made with Abraham. If you bless Israel, I will bless you. If you curse Israel, I will curse you. Do you consider that a serious issue? I mean, do you want Columbia University to be cursed by God? And notably there, Congresswoman Johanna Hayes responded to this by saying that the injection of biblical theology into the hearing was inappropriate. You know, all of this kind of just showing us how many different directions people were coming from at this issue, right? And also how you have people disagreeing at such a fundamental level. For example, there's so much disagreement on just how to define anti-Semitism. And in the hearing, for instance, lawmakers raised the issue of the phrase from the river to the sea, which notably some people believe calls for the elimination of the state of Israel, while others say it's just an aspirational call for Palestinian freedom, which Shafiq at one point basically acknowledges and saying it's a difficult issue because some people hear it as anti-Semitic, other people do not. And with that, the argument is that whatever someone's intentions may be, the result can be to make Jewish students feel unsafe. You know that, I mean, it brings us to this whole other debate about how much we should distinguish between feeling unsafe and being unsafe, right? With people asking, well, where do you draw the line? And also notably, all of this playing out as pro-Palestinian Columbia students are now continuing to protest for a second day in response to Shafiq's testimony, with some reportedly being threatened with suspension. But with everything that we've seen, and as everything is playing out, I gotta ask you, what are your thoughts here?